Mr. Speaker. A uh, gentleman from 14. Mr. Speaker, on general orders, we have House Bill 1183. We passed a bill that addressed that issue last Friday, and with that, Mr. Speaker, I'd ask unanimous consent that Senate Bill 1183 be returned to the State Affairs Committee. We've heard the request. Is there an objection? The lady from District 1 has objected to the unanimous consent request. Gentleman from 14. Mr. Speaker, I move that Senate Bill 1183 be returned to the State Affairs Committee. Second from the gentleman from 21. Is there debate on the motion to send House or Senate Bill 1183 back to State Affairs? Lady from one. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, House Bill 1183 was sent to the body by the full committee. Um, I, it was sent for amendments, which I used my staff's time, my secretary's time to help me enter the information for the amendments. I also used LSO to create three amendments to this bill to make it a better bill. For those of us um, who want to end abortion in this state, what my amendments would have done was um, would remove the date it would become effective. Right now, this bill will not become effective. The heartbeat bill will not become effective until an appellate court makes a decision. And so why I want to keep this on the amending order is it is the only opportunity I have to be able to argue that in front of the body, in, in front of citizens, is to remove the effective date on the occurrence of the appellate court as opposed to immediate. So that was one of my amendments. Um, one of the other amendments was to remove the rape and incest portions of this bill. Uh, we as a body say we want to save just one baby or any baby. So this is an opportunity to remove that exemption and to, to be able to save more babies by removing that exemption from the bill. And then the other, that would treat all babies equally. And right now we're treating babies conceived by rape or incest differently than we're treating other babies that are conceived in other ways. And that's not equal access under the law. That's, that's not equal justice. Um, the other part about this bill that I have a problem with is we are treating people who violate this law differently. Um, if it's a doctor, it's treated different than a woman. And, and, and I, I have problems with all of these, and, and this is the only process I have been allowed um, to present my case. I have been denied hearings on a, a bill to address these issues for four years now. And I continually try to end abortion in Idaho. And this is the only opportunity I have to be able to run that idea through the body. And so that's why I'm asking you to vote against taking it off the amending order and returning it to committee. This may be the only chance we have to, to address abortion and ending it in this state. As I remind you, there's 29 babies killed every week in this, in this state, all of them within 20 miles of this capital. I'm guessing if any of you from the other outlying areas wanted to end abortion, you know, you, it, it, it's being driven by Boise politics, why we have abortion clinics in this state. We do not have them north of, of um, Idaho Fall, or Twin Falls, and Boise. So I'm asking you to not return this to committee, to leave it on the amending order. Who knows what will happen? Who knows how long we'll be here? There's no need to send this back to committee to just kill it when it is our only and last opportunity, I think, to end abortion in Idaho. And I'm hoping we can have that debate. I'm hoping we can have that discussion. It's, it's really hard um, if you're not allowed to present your ideas in committee then you never have the debate. Um, you never get to um, use the process to uh, share your ideas. And I'm sure the minority pa party may feel similar to this. Um, if, you, if you don't get to share what um, someone on the opposite side of the aisle ha uh, talks about, you never come to good consensus. And I've heard so many complaints how this body is fighting and fighting over issues, but the issues seem to be coming from a very narrow band. And it does seem like it's, we are fighting because we, we don't get to openly discuss our ideas and take a vote. 
when, when I first came to this, this body and, and I first got elected as a representative, I thought, hey, here's an opportunity to represent my people, bring ideas to the body, discuss them in, in a, a, a open forum, hear both sides of the issue, and take a vote on it. And um, that has not happened with my ideas, and so this is my opportunity to do that. Um, you might not like this bill, or you might like it, you might be for it, you might be against it. That's fine. I'm not asking for that. I'm just asking for the debate. I'm asking for the conversation. I'm asking for open dialogue and to stop suppressing the voice of the people, of my people at times. Um, I think four years, I've waited long enough, and, and this, this is a really good uh, debate I'd like to have with the body, and I'm sure everyone has great ideas on this. And so I think the process has been abused. I think... Let's talk about the motion to return to the committee and uh, keep so, it to that great. question. So the reason I don't want to return it to committee is a lot of committee chairmen um, they act as a veto power. It is not the role of a committee chairman to right. veto that, bills. That it is, is also outside the bounds of the motion, I believe. So, uh, Thank you, Mr. Speaker, but I don't think it is because um, because the committee chairman, the, according to Mason's rules, is supposed to facilitate the work of the committee. And, and I think that's to facilitate our republic form of government. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm asking the body to not return this to committee, we may never get to it on the amending order, but by every day I look at it up there, I at least have a little hope and opportunity that my citizen's voice may be heard because it's not going to happen through this committee. So I, I would ask your no vote on returning this to committee, and, and thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Is there further debate on the motion to return the bill to committee? Gentleman from 13. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members of the body to debate the motion to return Senate Bill 1183 to the committee. Uh, Mr. Speaker and members of the body, Senate Bill 1183 uh, came to us a couple of weeks ago. In committee, it was revealed that there was a technical flaw in Senate Bill 1183. And the House State Affairs Committee determined at that point that we would send it to the amending order in an attempt to only fix that technical flaw. And that was the agreement uh, stated in committee, Mr. Speaker. However, when, it, when a bill is on the amending order, anyone has the right to bring amendments. Senator Davis told me years ago that there were two bills that he never allowed to go to the amending order, an abortion bill and a gun bill, because they are highly emotional, very nuanced pieces of legislation. However, in talking with the bill's sponsor, we thought that we could put Senate Bill 1183 on there and not heed the warning of Senator Davis. I now see the wisdom in why you don't take an abortion bill to the amending order, because when it arrived there, there were hostile amendments to Senate Bill 1183. It wasn't just a technical fix, it was hostile amendments. This body on Friday passed. House Bill 366, which replaced Senate Bill 1183. The House State Affairs Committee and this body has passed three pro-life bills. All right, so state your objection. I gave you a lot of latitude in your debate. Thank you. And but, uh, the huh. same latitude will be extended, but what's your specific Thank you, Mr. Problem? Speaker. My specific problem is you don't know if an if a, um, amendment is hostile or not until you see it. And, and no one has seen those amendments. They are private property. And so until um, for one person in the body to make a decision that it's hostile when the rest of this body has not seen that amendment, Okay, uh, that your... is un unfair to say it's a hostile amendment. All right, you've made your point. Please continue with your uh, debate in favor of the motion. Gentleman from 13. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was just simply relaying a conversation that I had with the good lady from District 1 about her amendments that she had brought to that bill. And she indicated there were three amendments, two would fix it. And I argued one of them would be hostile. So I was simply relaying a conversation that we had. The point is, Mr. Speaker, is this body is extremely pro-life. House State Affairs is very pro-life. We've passed legislation to defend life, and we will continue to do so. And I would ask for the, the body's indulgence to return Senate Bill 1183 to the House State Affairs Committee. Thank you. Is there a further debate on the motion? 
lady from one for what purpose do you rise to debate for second time does anyone wish to debate the motion for the first time the gentleman from district 21 thank you chairman uh mr speaker as a bill co-sponsor we're making the request to return this to to committee as my co-sponsor described uh, there was a, a simple fix the simple fix has been incorporated uh, therefore as a bill sponsor uh, other, other attempts to hijack or to radiator cap or override uh, the changes that we've made are hostile. And I would appreciate your indulgence to uh, return this to again. Committee. Your objection is noted. Does anyone wish to debate the bill for the first time? The motion, excuse me, the motion. Our good lady from District 1, for the second time, under the same admonishment as I did the first time, is stay within the confines of the motion. Thank you. Go thank, ahead. Thank you. Um, since the good gentleman um, brought up the fact that there was an error in the bill, uh, what he didn't tell you is I am the one that found that error in the bill and pointed it out. So the bill that they originally had would have done the exact opposite of what they were trying to do. And I gave them the courtesy to let them know that in a polite way in committee before that bill got passed to this body and the AG um, and, the, and the governor vetoed it because it had a fatal flaw in the bill. It did exactly opposite what they were trying to do. And, and I, they did not give me credit for that, but I am the one that found that. I care about babies. And I think the only hostile thing is to continually kill babies. These amendments I have are, are put on to save more babies. And I would like to have the conversation about that because I have the numbers and I have the information on what that looks like. Um, so I, I urge you to vote no on this. Um, I have gone through the process. I've done it properly. I've waited properly for it to be called back to committee. And, and I just urge you, you may be in this position at some spot too when you have a very important kid, uh, bill in your committee and it's refused <coughs> to be heard. And so this may be your only option in a future. And, and I, I, I would also like to say about amendments, many states, well the Senate does it all the time as you see as all of our great bills come back with many amendments, but many states, they do hundreds and hundreds and sometimes thousands of amendments to get proper language in these bills. So I do think this is an opportunity. Um, it's no disrespect to the sponsor. The other bill is through the system. This would be an opportunity to, to add to this. And so I'm, I'm asking for your red light on this vote. Thank you. My microphone was off, and I, for that I apologize. So the effect of this vote, a yes vote returns 1183 to committee, a no vote keeps it on general orders. The, the clerk will unlock the machine, and the members will record their votes. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change his vote? The clerk will lock the machine and record the vote. The vote count shows 56 in favor, 11 against, and 3 absent. Uh, the motion passes, and House Bill 11, or excuse me, Senate Bill 1183 will be returned to the. House State Affairs Committee. <laughs> 